Hello, everyone. I'm so excited today to have with me Clarissa Castillo Ramsey. And we are going to dive into a conversation which I know will be fruitful and engaging about painting your path, choosing and living into a creative life. So here we are, writers in this writing journey um, Facebook group. And I know people are, you know, writers and creatives, artists, visual artists, there's all sorts of creative folks out there. And so, and you are one of them, Clarissa. So welcome, yes. welcome to oh my gosh. the group. And Thank having, you so much. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to have you here. So yeah. I wonder if you would share with folks a little bit about who you are and your background and whatever whatever else you want to share whatever all right so thank you so much tracy for having me in your community i'm so excited to be here and gosh what can i say i'll try and be um a little concise and not wander off too much but i like to describe myself as a multi-passionate person ever since i was a little child I so resonated with the art world and declared myself as an artist at the age of five. And my parents are both physicians, came here from the Philippines. And so they're very practical. And when I told my mom that this is what I, this is what I want to be, this is who I am. She just said, oh, child, you're going to, you're going to be rich and famous after you pass away, like Pablo Picasso. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, uh oh, maybe I need to, you know, think about doing something else. And I remember feeling a little bit crushed in that, mm -hmm. but my, you know, my, my, art, my artistic spirit never went away. So, so the muse would come and go throughout throughout my life. And something else that I knew at a very young age was I just loved connecting with people. I loved helping people. I loved encouraging people. And, and that's something that has, has always been true to me. So I'm going to fast forward. So I spent my corporate careers just trying to fit myself in to different positions, going the practical route, getting a good grades, getting a good job, bup, 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 bup. but within me was just this unrest of, mm -hmm. I'm not really truly expressing myself a hundred percent. I'm still hiding. I'm not fully doing my artistic work or my coaching work. Yeah. And I did have jobs where I kind of expressed that I used to be a graphic designer for the coffee bean and tea leaf. And that was so much fun until it wasn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And we grow, we expand. And then I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to get back to this coaching world and, and really trying to help others be the best that they can be. So I went to grad school and I landed my dream coaching job. And that's what I did for the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. And then in 2021, I said, okay, it's time for me to pivot again. And so I left to pursue this creative path that I'm on now. Okay. That's like, yeah, that's a journey. And I think, I always think it's so interesting that call and I see it a lot in writing circle with writers that there's this kind of calling to come forward and do the yes. writing. And yet there's also the practical reality of living in this world. Mm. But that practical reality so often quashes the creative spirit. And can you talk about like what that does to a person in terms of not, not just psychologically, but like how we can, how we can open up to that, you know, we might be afraid to, to, yes. to leave that safety of the practical, the job, the 11 year dream job, whatever. So what did you like, what, what did you decide or what, what pushed you out of that safety zone yes. into that just like unknown, because that's the creative life is a lot of unknown. 
Yeah, it really is. And that's such a great question, Tracy. And for me, I knew even when I was at my dream job, I had, there was going to be a change in who my boss was. And to be honest with you, like that could have, that was a pivotal moment for me to either stay or be with this person who had a very scary reputation and leave, but I chose to stay. And it was because of the fear. And, and I think for me, at least, I think what helped me be in this kind of both worlds is just allowing myself to begin to incorporate creativity back into my life. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like it's like, oh, it's got to be an all or nothing. And it doesn't. And so for me, I just started doing little projects. And for me, actually, a, another pivotal moment in, in finally beginning to move out of the corporate space yeah. was in 2018. That's really when I got into podcasts. So, you know, maybe that's a little bit late, early. I don't really know, but I just loved this podcast called Don't Keep Your Day Job. Oh. And, and it just so resonated with, with me where I was in life. I was, you know, in my 40s and, and listening to her podcast. I just was like, you know what? I'm going to write about this. I'm going to write about how I'm feeling right now. I'm mm-hmm. going to also interview women who have done what I want to do. And, and let me be, you know, let me put my organizational psychology hat on because that's my educational background. Let me do a little bit of research and interview these women, share their stories and see, okay, what's the common denominator with living your creative life or living the life that you really want to live. And with each of those interviews, I did an art piece as my thank you to this, to the person I interviewed. And that was, that was also the beginning. And I was getting back into create creativity. And that gave me energy to be like, okay, Clarissa, this is, this has been your long-term goal actually to work for yourself. Mm. So And that, that was just, you know, it was just taking little steps to, to infuse that creativity. And I'm curious about, well, first of all, we should let people know that you do have a book called Painting Your Path, correct? Yes. Yes. And what what was the common denominator in your findings for these women who choose to live a creative life? Yeah. You know what? Denominators. (laughs) Right. There was basically this, this moment where they just had enough Mm. and they were just like, you know what, this, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I'll share one story where this, this gal, she was a, she was a lawyer. She was studying to be a lawyer. She didn't really know what to do. So she went that practical route that was, you know, praised by her family and she hated it. She mm-hmm. was like a junior partner or whatever. And she just looked around and everybody was so excited to be out having these dinners, these fancy dinners. And she was like, what the hell am I doing here? I got to go. Mm-hmm. And so she, and what she really wanted to do was work with animals. And she mm-hmm. opened up a pet grooming business. And so I find like, that really was it. It was, you know, like the Nike slogan, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and really, truly, that was it. It was just like leaning into, you know, being being open with yourself. Like, this is what I want to ch- even just try. This is, I'm not going to feel rested until I do this thing. Okay. So let's say you, well, for, for people out there and, and Clarissa, you work with you work with people who are wanting to make this these changes in their in their lives but you know for some of us like i'm a i feel like i clear the decks and jump right into new things but that's not i recognize the way a lot of people need to work and so how do you because as you mentioned before we came on like that can be hugely stressful yes and 
possibly traumatizing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, so let's say you're someone, maybe you want to write a novel or you are really wanting to explore your painting more, but the, 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 there's so much going on in your life and you, you're, you're not finding yourself making time for the work that is really true to your heart. And you, you know, you want to, you've got this little compass inside that's really turning you that way. How as a creative that's kind of caught in this capitalist patriarchal blah, right. blah, blah world, do you begin a kind of gentler movement toward that creative life? Yeah, I think, you know, just first by recognizing that it's not an all or nothing. In fact, you don't have to monetize, let's just say, on your artwork. Mm -hmm. You don't have to monetize on the books that you're writing. It's nice and you absolutely can, but also know that this could this could be a passion project. This could be just something for yourself. And I also think when we can take a step back and just look at it like that, like you truly have the love for writing, you truly have the love of painting and just doing it for yourself at first, you don't even need to share it, but maybe you just start there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you begin to share a little bit of what you're doing. And again, you don't have to, but it's funny, I think when, and I'll just share myself as an example, during the pandemic, couldn't really go out. And I decided I'm going to do a painting a day with honestly zero intention of like, oh, I'm going to make money off of this. It was yeah. really just like, I'm just going to paint. I will let people know it is for sale, but that's it. That was about it. And so I, I think I got to day 222 or something. I, did, I didn't quite get to 365, but I got up there Yeah. and I just had fun with it. I just mm -hmm. had fun with it. And lo and behold, people, on, and I only did it on Instagram. I don't have a website for my artwork and people were DMing me. Oh my God, I really love this. This piece is calling me how much. And, and then it just, be, and then it was fun. It was like mm -hmm. a little double win. And again, I wasn't going into it like with this, because I think we can add stress on ourselves. Like I must make money off of this creative art cre yeah. artwork that I do or my book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was the first thing I learned. Like, hey, don't necessarily expect you're going to be the next Liz Gilbert or whoever, Oprah. Totally, or, totally. Know, like. Steven yeah. Pressler and just, you know, can you be, can you, can you just have fun? I think, you know, it always sort of comes back to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I, I, sometimes I watch crows in the sky and they play and I'm yes. like, and there's such delight. And, and I think as creatives, I know that this is not true for all writers, but, or you know, painters, but we can get really serious really mm -hmm. quickly. Yes. All of a sudden, you know, you've done a little bit of writing and then you're like, I'm going to write a bestseller. Yeah. And, and the pressure becomes just like, you don't know, you know, right. you, you're not really sure how to work point of view, but you're going to write a bestseller. And so the more you can play, the more you can like explore and delight. And that's where the magic is. That's where the juice is. That's Yes. Yeah. So like, let's talk about the richness of the creative life. Like, why do you feel it's important for people to pursue creativity in their, in their lives? I think, you know, we're in such a world, like you said, just so patriarchal, so capitalistic, where it's just like, uh, 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 there's just so much efforting and so much, so much in our head. I don't know mm. if you feel that way, Tracy. I certainly <laughs> do a lot. And it's like, okay, this like is just too much. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important to explore, even if you're, you don't feel like you're an artist, you know, we're all an artist, we're all creative in some kind of way. And if you feel that you're not, it's probably because you just haven't given yourself the time to explore it and just have fun. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important to you know, do things 
that we wouldn't normally do, do things that are a little bit different because that not only creates, you know, and I'm not a neuroscientist, but I know it creates new pathways for our brains. And it just, you know, brings another dynamic, another richness in our lives. And this year I decided like expansion is my word of the year. Mm. And I wanted that to be, you know, not just in business, but also create creatively. And so I decided, okay, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to buy in a subscription to Skillshare. Oh my goodness. I have had so much fun just exploring different classes because I have been pretty much self-taught and it's been fun just to try out these new techniques. And I started another painting a day series that I was officially going to start tomorrow because I think the 22nd of September marks the last hundred days of the year. Oh, I think. And, (laughs) but I couldn't wait. I was like, you know what? I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting for this. I'm just going to start now. Yeah. 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 That's such a good, I I've actually bought, I'm my creative push is watercolor. Oh yeah. And and for me as a writer, like the visual of the watercolor, the painting is such a delight. So I'm not, I'm not like, I want to learn a little bit about it. And I also just want to explore on my own because yes, I know for myself, I want to get good at something. And so I want it to be something that I actually don't feel I need to get good at that I can, that I can play. And that gives my, my body space and my mind space to just delight in. Yes. And watercolors, there is just so much that you can do with it. Like you could be tight, you could be, and I like just being super like fluid and seeing the colors blend together. Me and, too. <laughs> and the unexpected and oh my gosh, it's so fun. Yeah. So it, you know, even this, I guess to say to, to writers who are, I know there are some writers who are exploring other, other avenues of creativity. I've got lots of like fabric workers and textile workers and that sort of thing and for those who are kind of just in the like I must write because I know when I started writing I was like and I imagine this happens with paint is that like then you then that's what you do like you kind of you kind of like grip around the thing whereas the you know the painting serves the writing Serves, yes. the, serves the 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 way of being in your in your day to day. I don't yeah. know if you want to say anything about that. Yeah, and I think you know I'm not currently writing anything, but I I bought ten ISBN numbers, so there is more. There will be more <laughs> down the line, and and for me currently, it's just the writing part is journaling. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not always consistent with it, but it's like when I do need a break from painting because to your point as a writer, you can just get so focused in. And it's just nice to have like another thing that you can go to, or, you know, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's just movement or being outside and just having, and like pulling from all these different resources to just fill your creative cup. Yes. Yes. Cause I think too, when you're working on a project if the project, particularly, you know, there's lots of people who are kind of in the middle of projects and when we're in the middle of projects, we can get really, and fair enough, like they need a certain kind of attention and focus. Yes. And they also need, we need to access the the subconscious. And I think through exploration in different venues or going outside and relaxing the brain. Yes. I'm sure they've done studies on this. <laughs> they, oh yes, they have. Yeah. that you come you, you do fill your I love that fill your creative cup because that focus that intense like over that pressure can deplete us and yes. I think that that's really just important to acknowledge and if you are a writer and you are curious about visual arts you could even paint out some of your scenes and it doesn't have to be pretty you don't have to show it to anybody but there's some sort of 
expression that's happening there on the canvas or on the yeah on paper on the watercolor paper yeah, <laughs> right absolutely absolutely yeah. so if people um are interested in your book we'll put the link down below um and and maybe you can tell them a little bit about your book but also what you do when you work with clients because i know that you help people make that transition if they're interested in transitioning out of kind of the nine to five corporate world into a more creative um life yeah lifestyle more, yeah lifestyle and it doesn't have to be a job but it can be something that they want to focus so maybe you can talk, speak to those two things sure yes and so i am really enjoying working with people who were basically kind of like on a on the path that i was on and what i love to tell my clients is look you don't need to you don't need to quit tomorrow because a lot of people that i work with they're at the at the top of their career they're making good six figures and and to to give that up or you know to transition that can be really scary so i like to put what i call a corporate escape plan <laughs> together and just really help help them map that out however you know how many however many years so that's part of it and then what i also love to help my clients with is just to explore all the creative things that you can do as an artist, as a musician, um, as a, as a writer and, you know, and just like have them play and think mm -hmm. about like, okay, if you were to design your next chapter, incorporating your creativity, how could that look? And so for a lot of my clients, they're also multi-passionate like I am. And so it's just a lot of fun to to work through that mm -hmm. and to also test out now while you're still in a day job and have that, I hate the word side hustle, you know, like the, whatever your side gig, you know, <laughs> you're, you yeah. can test out the waters with your creative work. And by starting now, you, you get to, I'm just going to say it fail quickly because there's going to, you're going to have wins. You're going to have Eh, moments where things don't go as you had planned and that's okay it's all part of the journey mm -hmm. but, but at the same time you've got that day job who which is your investor into your next chapter yeah yeah, yeah. i think I think that's important to just recognize too like nothing is lost nothing is lost the yes. rave and as writers we can write like reams of pages and none of them make it into the final draft but we needed those to get to the next place and i think that's true of life you know we yes. need need those to get to the next place yeah 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 <clears throat> and so um if people want to find you clarissa we'll put a link down below but maybe you can tell you know, tell people what you've got available sure. for them. Yeah. Um, if you, if you feel like following me on Instagram, you can follow me there at CCR underscore sunshine. If you just feel like having a coffee chat, um, you can do that too. I have spots available for that to just talk about whatever resonated with you here today. Um, you can find my painting your path podcast as yeah. well and connect with me and tune into that as well. Yeah. And we're gonna, I'm going to post Clarissa's podcast link up tomorrow and yeah, check out her book too, painting your path. Yes. So getting everybody juiced up for their creative lives, which yes. really I feel is radical work in this in this world and really, really important to the human spirit. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tracy. This was fun. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you everyone for tuning in today.